these are the biggest embarrassments to have ever been seen on Hell's Kitchen. And what this contestant had to face was just plain unfortunate, but still no less embarrassing. So, Ramsey kicked off the first ever blind taste test, which is a classic these days, and for good reason. Imagine this, contestants were blindfolded and had noise-canceling headsets on and had to identify four mystery foods correctly based only on taste, texture, and, uh, other mouth stuff. Can't hear anything, you can't see anything. Gordon taps you and you gotta, you know, open wide, which in and of itself is a scary thought. The stakes were high. The winning team got an exclusive afternoon with Ramsey, while the losers faced a mountain of dirty pots and pans. The showdown began with Jimmy and Andrew taking the stage. Ramsey, ever the prankster, tested those headsets by throwing out some playful insult. You jumped up little politician, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, seems like they're working all right. Anyway, Andrew nailed it with the chicken, and Jimmy aced the radish, tying the score at one point each. Then Elsie and Jessica stepped up. Ox tongue was a tough one, as both guessed pork, but Elsie rallied with scallops, Caesar salad dressing, and a burger. Well, Jessica stumbled, and the red team took a commanding 4-1 lead. The grand finale pitted the professional chefs, Michael and Ralph, against each other. Veal sweetbread stumped them both initially, and Ramsey threw down the gauntlet. He warned the blue team that Ralph had to nail the next one to have a shot. Unfortunately, Ralph missed the spinach, mixing it up with romaine lettuce. As that same 4-1 to one score stood, the red team won. Andrew's disappointment in Ralph, meanwhile, was evident. I'm a little disappointed that Ralph didn't get spinach. I gotta tell you the honest truth. Ralph, you should have gotten spinach. The blue team faced the consequences of their defeat as they embarked on that dishwashing marathon I mentioned earlier. Amidst it all, Jessica couldn't help but voice her discontent. Meanwhile, Andrew, still nursing that bitter disappointment, grumbled about how he wished he was with Ramsey instead of, well, where he was. I gotta tell you, I'm bitter and pissed off right now. We haven't had any time with Ramsey. I would like to put on a suit and enjoy his company. I get you, man. Totally get ya. But Ramsey wasn't done dishing out penalties. He hit the blue team with a second blow, locking their storeroom for the night, the very place where their adorable baby chickens were chilling. Ramsey gave them just one shot at the combination. Ralph felt like he had one arm tied behind his back. C, one, six, nine, zero, Y. Log it. I'm saying it once. The plot thickened as the blue team successfully cracked the combination and retrieved their feathered friends. Andrew, in an attempt to be resourceful, asked Jessica for masking tape to seal the latch. However, a certain someone saw the whole thing go down. What are you doing? Sue Chef Scott. Caught in the act, Andrew got a stern talking to calling him out for trying to cheat his way through the punishment. Hey, you think I'm fucking stupid? I'm not stupid like you. Come here. You fucking guys fucked it up, you get a punishment. You don't fucking rig it so it works for you. Scott didn't mince his words, telling Andrew to cut the act and get serious like the rest of his teammates. He was fuming. Why don't you try being as serious as these people are on your team instead of being a jerk? But opinions on sous chef Scott's scolding of Andrew were pretty divided among viewers. Some agreed with Scott's approach, seeing it as a necessary call-out. A few even went so far as to liken Scott to a New York version of Ramsey. On the flip side, there were those who thought Andrew's move wasn't cheating, but rather a clever workaround to deal with the punishment resourcefully. These viewers commended Andrew for it, seeing it as a smart move in a challenging situation. So, which side are you on? While you mull that over, here's my favorite comment. Andrew got caught, but everyone else on the team supported what he was doing. Andrew is the guy in a group of friends spraying graffiti, and when the cops roll up, everyone else bolts. And he's the one left behind holding a can. Yeah, that sums it up better than I ever could. Now, I've gone over this little incident in one of my caught cheating videos before, and I still think sous chef Scott was in the right on this one, but he wasn't always. So, moving on to season two. 30 minutes into the third restaurant service, customers were happily enjoying appetizers from both kitchens. So far, so successful, right? 
However, Giacomo reported to sous chef Scott that his oven wasn't doing its job. This is cold, it's coming out, it's coming out cold. Sous chef Scott headed over to investigate. To everyone's surprise, it turned out to be a simple oversight on Giacomo's part. No, I noticed it earlier. Dude, you don't have the fing gas on, stupid! Yeah, he forgot to turn the oven on. Scott, understandably frustrated at such a basic mistake, made sure to give Giacomo a piece of his mind. The real drama unfolded when word of this mishap reached Ramsey. And if you thought Scott's rebuke was bad, you ain't seen nothing yet. Oh, is the oven not on? I'm not sure, Chef, I'm sorry. You're not sure. You donkey! But guess what? Giacomo was surprisingly calm about it. Sometimes I do a really good job and sometimes I don't. And it's tough because I want to make him happy, you know? That's really inspiring, actually. Now, people watching the show started getting curious about what went wrong with Giacomo. Between the signature dish challenge and the service where he forgot to turn on the oven, they were wondering if he really fell that far or if something else was going on. Doubts arose, fueled by insider revelations from past contestants who hinted at producers deliberately messing with the appliances in a bid to inject drama into the show. So while it looked like Giacomo messed up, some folks thought there might be more to the story than the show let on. On the other hand, though, this viewer called out sous chef Scott for being just horrible. He consistently refrained from providing constructive criticism. Instead, his approach involved getting into people's faces and raising his voice unnecessarily without offering any meaningful feedback. At least Ramsey tries to impart a lesson when he gets loud, but folks were convinced that Scott was just being downright unprofessional. And Scott's threat to physically harm Josh if he jeopardized the service for Rock didn't help assuage anyone's fears. You him over, I'm coming after you. You got it? You got it? You understand? While many associate violence with physical assaults, workplace violence and harassment are a little bit more complicated. It includes any situation where a person faces abuse, threats, intimidation, or assault in the context of their employment. Coming for you if you f him over. You got it? I'm not fing him over. In this scenario, Scott's verbal threat was still a form of workplace violence, regardless of whether or not he intended to follow through with it. Verbal abuse goes beyond just words. It can really end up damaging a person's self-esteem and leave them feeling powerless. It involves the use of harsh language, and yeah, I think just about anybody would call that language harsh. And what Scott was doing just made for a toxic work environment. And stuff like this is a one-way ticket to ruining somebody's mental health. In any professional setting, fostering a healthy and respectful workplace is essential, and Scott's actions were anything but. And of course, viewers didn't let this slide, which I mean, hell yeah. But Josh was hardly the only one getting threatened by the guy. The women had it just as bad, if not worse. In most dynamics, women often face a heightened vulnerability to violence in the workplace due to various factors such as unequal social and economic status and power imbalances, a bunch of stuff that's way above my pay grade to explain in the detail it deserves. But what I can talk about is this specific instance involving Scott and Andrea, where his extreme anger when she was managing the hot plate escalated to an alarming level. Andrea's scrutiny of Scott's actions seemed to set him off, leading him to express his frustration in an entirely inappropriate manner. They need to be cooked further, Scott. How much longer? 45 seconds longer in a hot pan. Come on, make that story happen fast. Yes. The rest of the table's gone. Scott even threw around some really derogatory language. A favorite of all you Australians in the audience, but not really acceptable in the States. And went a step further by, once again, threatening to physically harm her. I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna fucking punch her in the face. Yeah, this definitely didn't age well. I don't think I need to get into why, considering all the preamble I gave Josh's situation. Same applies here. Still though, viewers came to her defense all the same, condemning Scott's actions. And I'm totally with them here. Andrea might have been trying to make up for missing the planned sabotage, but there's zero justification for Scott's aggressive behavior. Absolutely none. However, some viewers tried to defend Scott's behavior by saying that he was like a drill instructor, or said that he was just joking. So what's your take? A lot of you told me when I posted this video that I was being too whiny. And I see you. I acknowledge your concern about my balls, 
Trust me, they're fine. But you know, this guy perfectly summed up my feelings. Pause your screen and give it a read. It's well worth it, I'll tell you that much. And whoever you are, thanks for this. Anyway, you all probably remember this moment from Season 7, where Ramsay handed over the reins of the hot plate to sous chef Scott when he had to step away for a bit. Chef Ramsay leaves the kitchen for a quick moment. Tuna! Yes, Chef! Sous Chef Scott steps in to keep the momentum going. As Jason and Benjamin promptly sent out their tuna and garnishes respectively, the operations seemed promising. However, Benjamin attempted to prematurely call out the next ticket in an attempt to seize control. Next pick up. Two chicken. Hey, 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 hey. This move got under Scott's skin, and his annoyance escalated into aggressive confrontation. Hmm, where have I seen this before? Unfortunately for him, Chef Scott is not impressed. No, don't answer that. The tension heightened as Scott questioned if he should step aside and let Benjamin take charge, to which Benjamin declined. The boiling point arrived when Scott, mere inches away from Benjamin's face, emphatically warned him never to attempt stealing his job again. You're gonna do my fucking job on leave right now. You think you can do it? No, chef. You think you can put up with all this bullshit? No, chef. I know you can't. I get some fuck over there and don't ever come up to my pants again and try to take my fucking place. Damn. What do you think Benjamin did to deserve this? I mean, he was only trying to be a leader. Wasn't that the whole point of the show? Or do you think he was undermining the brigade? Scott also came under fire for screaming at Raj when Ramsey tried to embarrass him over something out of his control. So if you remember, Ramsey found himself short on Dover's soul, and Raj, stationed at that crucial post, became the target of Ramsey's frustration. Ramsey, seemingly deciding to put the blame somewhere, chose to publicly humiliate Raj in front of the whole dining room. But Raj stood his ground and made his refusal to be demeaned clear. Sous Chef Scott intervened, aggressively berating Raj and insisting that he let Ramsey parade him around like a donkey. Now, before you start accusing me of accusing Ramsey, let's take it from the top. So we're on entrees in his third and last service. I personally cooked thousands and thousands and thousands of pieces of salmon in my life. Yeah, but Raj's attempt at salmon went awry as Ramsey discovered it was cooked in an unnecessary and frankly distasteful stock, forcing the blue team to start over. Ah, uh, no sauce, bro. In a sequence of back and forths with Ramsey, Raj first claimed readiness with refired salmon, then backtracked, needing an additional minute, earning a scathing remark from Ramsey. Concentrate, I don't like that. Sorry to say that, but it's true. What a f***ing bozo. The situation reached a boiling point when Ramsey, frustrated by the raw salmon, It's raw. It's f***ing raw. Did that. Oblivious to the reason for rejection, Raj attempted to seek clarification from Ramsey, who dismissed him outright. I'm not this timid man who's just gonna sit back and just say, okay, chef. You know, I'm going to try to make a case for myself. Then he stepped in to assist, enabling the team to finally get their first table out. Later, Boris caught Raj eating the rejected fish at his station and pleaded with him to stop. Have you got enough in there? But that's so good. It's really a waste. Wow. No, I mean, I just a quick little bite. It's really tasty. Oh, fucking hell. Flawless logic. Literally bulletproof. Raj then presented his halibut, which Ramsey accepted. However, trouble brewed as Ramsey noticed Raj had cooked three Dover soles that weren't even ordered. How many have you cooked? One, two, three. Oh my God. When I get a busy, I'll just start firing everything. So when they need it, I got it. Vinny advised Raj that Ramsey would not accept them. But then immediately when Ramsey called out for the Dover souls, Raj shockingly claimed they were all out, despite three still on order. This revelation horrified Ramsey and the entire blue team. Chat, we ran out of the soul special. What? After careful consideration, Ramsey made the unconventional decision to send Raj out to the dining room and inform the diners who ordered the Dover Souls about the mishap. Get out there and tell them you're dragging two. And you go to the customers and tell them you f***ed it up. Raj attempted to resist, citing his dirty apron as an excuse, but Ramsey insisted he leave. 
Come here, come here, you. If I tell you to get out there, I don't give a fuck if you got a thumb up, you fat crack. Get out there! Struggling to drop his apron, Sue Chef Scott intervened with yet more aggression, forcefully ordering Raj to drop it and exit the kitchen. Put it down and get out there! I think it was unfair. Or maybe it was an editing mistake? How did Ramsay first say that nobody ordered Dover Souls, only to say they needed three almost immediately in a matter of seconds? I don't know. Maybe I'm just wearing my Raj colored glasses again? <laughs> ah. Anyway, with all that being said, there are a few instances where I think Scott's reactions were justified. The first one that comes to my mind is the first service of season three. Here's what went down. Poor Aaron sent out his first batch of chicken, only to find it charred on the bottom. What is all that? I guess that's the maple syrup, sir. Another one, please, yeah? Yes, sir. Yeah? I'm feeling pretty dang useless, pretty puny today. Haven't been able to do anything right yet. Frustration hit him hard feeling like he couldn't get anything right that day due to his illness. As he attempted to redo the chicken, the weight of his perceived incompetence overwhelmed him, and he started feeling dizzy. Taking a breather outside, Aaron sought a moment to collect himself, but not everyone was so sympathetic. I'd like to see Aaron get better. Oh. Get better at cooking. Meanwhile, Ramsey checked on Aaron in the back. God, what a quick is it? The guy's in there with a dry Shh. sword. Everything's dry in the eye. Relax, relax, relax. Despite feeling unwell, Aaron refused to throw in the towel, determined to push through. In the midst of this struggle, Josh stepped in to take over the meat station, only to discover that all of Aaron's cooked meat was completely unsalvageable. Unfortunately, I myself walked into the deepest pile. Josh, yes, chef. how many portions of chicken are overcooked? One, two, three, four, and that's all the chicken that we have, Chef. The consequence? Well, the blue team found themselves without any usable meat to continue the service. A disappointed sous chef Scott, clearly taken aback, couldn't fathom how they were running out of meat without serving any. His reaction was a mix of disbelief and frustration. We don't have any more Wellingtons. We don't have any lettuce. We haven't served any food, how could we be out of anything? The setback not only put a dent in the service, but also left the kitchen team scrambling to figure out how to recover from the unexpected situation. In season 8's Italian night service, Lewis's initial attempt at the salmon fell short, serving up a dish that Ramsay rightly criticized for being stone cold. Salmon stone cold! No chance. Yes, chef. Yeah, no, no, no. Lewis's struggles continued as he failed to prep another pork chop for an incoming order, and the one that he did manage to cook ended up burnt. Is that how we showed how to cook the pork? Not at all. Well, he managed a brief comeback with a couple successfully sent entrees. Lewis encountered difficulties at the proposal table, and Ramsay lashed out with a stern warning. Yes. Move, Louis. Yes, chef. Make them break up before they even fucking get married. But the situation deteriorated further when Lewis, in an ill-advised move to showcase his pork chop, presented a raw slice to sous chef Scott, who promptly berated him for not handling it properly. You can't even put it on a pan, you goddamn slob. You're gonna walk around with a pork chop Sorry, in your hands chef. like that? Get it in the fucking oven! The chef. Eh, fair's fair. The tipping point occurred with the presentation of a raw chicken parmesan, leading Ramsay to make the tough decision to eject Lewis from the service. He was also eliminated that night. Get out! Ah, music to my ears. Next, in the 11th service, Trev found himself at the appetizer station alongside Sabrina. Despite his initial confidence in his abilities, his lobster spaghetti hit a snag when it was rejected for having overcooked pasta. When Sabrina inquired about the timing for his spaghetti, his response was a loud declaration of needing four more minutes. How long, Trev, for two spaghetti? Four. Four? Four minutes. That pasta's gonna cook in four minutes, Trev. There's pasta in the back. However, sous chef Scott intervened delivering a stern order for Trev to rein in his anger and pull himself together. Hey, you watch your mouth right now. You don't stand over here and scream. I'm the one that's waiting for food from you. Get your shit together and cook a pasta. God knows Trev deserved it. But now, moving on to the most iconic showdown. When Monterey, in the fourth service of season nine, took charge of the fish station for the blue team. 
As they transitioned to entrees, he faced a setback when his sea bass fell apart. Sous Chef Scott stepped in, offering guidance on properly handling the fish. However, Monterey continued with the backtalk, insisting that there was nothing he could do, which ignited Scott's fury. When you take the fish out of the pan, you yes, leave sir. it on the spatula. It fell apart. There's nothing I can do. It fell apart. You leave it on the spatula. The heated exchange escalated when Scott accused Monterey of lying, a claim that Monterey made clear he rejected. There is something you can do because you should be f***ing responsible enough to care. You're gonna f***ing lie to my face and tell me there's nothing you can do. I understand what he's telling me and I'm listening to him, but you ain't gonna keep f***ing cussing at me. I'm gonna f who you are. Despite understanding Scott's instructions, Monterey drew a line at being cursed at, and I can respect that. All you have to do is bring it up I and it won't break. I understand. Do you? Then the argument reached its zenith, with both parties exchanging harsh words, which culminated in a hell of a clash. It is done then. Fuck you. Well, fuck you too then. Men of culture, huh? Some viewers applauded Monterey for standing up to sous chef Scott during the intense kitchen showdown. Some praised Monterey for not tolerating verbal abuse and asserting his boundaries. In doing so, they believed Monterey exposed Scott for being a clown. Anyway, in the initial seasons, I believe both Scott and Ramsey crossed many boundaries while Hell's Kitchen was still figuring out the fine line between tough coaching and being downright unpleasant. And, well, it also speaks of the time period they were filming in. It wasn't that long ago, but it was pretty different all the same. Although I really appreciate Ramsey's no-nonsense attitude most of the time, there are moments where he goes too far, like when he resorts to name-calling which is far from relevant to their culinary ineptitude. Missy, Missy, come here, you fat mouth little stupid bitch. On the other hand, Scott seemed to take his aggression a little further, maybe compensating for his less than impressive acting and TV presence compared to Ramsey. I don't know. But honestly, I'd hate to work with someone like him. But that's just me. I'm curious to know what you think about it. Get in the comments and keep me honest. If one of my daughter's boyfriends turns out to be vegetarian, I swear to God I'd never forgive them. Any guesses as to who made this claim? Yup, Gordon Ramsay, back in 2008. But believe me, it gets even more ridiculous than that. By the way, Ramsay also proudly declared, my biggest nightmare would be if the kids ever came up to me and said, Dad, I'm a vegetarian. Then I would sit them on the fence and electrocute them. Whoa, easy there, chef. At that time, he got flack from even the likes of Paul McCartney who called him stupid, and also said that everyone should turn vegan. Well, Mr. McCartney, let me just say, Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. But hold on, I hear you asking, isn't this supposed to be a Hell's Kitchen episode, not a real life retrospective? So why am I telling you all this? Well, because of her. Because I'm vegan, I did do a vegan dish. It is an herbal tonic soup, it has healing properties. No thanks. I mean, why would anyone living a vegan life sign up for a show that's not even close to being vegan friendly? There's like zero chance that you'd be able to win. And on top of that, the prize was was head chef at a steakhouse. Let's be real here. If Josie had won, who knows what kind of a mess she'd make in a place like that. But before I go into more details of how she messed up, let me give you a quick rundown about what Ramsey had to say about it. Now, Ramsey's beef with vegans is well known. No pun intended. He's a big advocate for eating meat and animal-related products, and he's had his fair share of clashes with vegans online. Not that long ago, he got into a spat with at that vegan teacher, who definitely fits the bill of the kind of person Ramsey doesn't take too kindly to. At that vegan teacher took offense to Ramsey promoting meat eating on TikTok, so she decided to express her views through a ukulele song. God, that's the most TikTok sentence I've ever seen. Said. Anyway, she said, or well, sung, eating animals is wrong, Gordon Ramsay, hurting animals is wrong, Gordon Ramsay, and if you call me a donut, that's fine, as long as you're a vegan from now on. 
Rhyming Gordon Ramsay with Gordon Ramsay. Huh, bold strategy there. Anyway, Ramsay's response became one of his most watched TikTok videos. It shows him sitting at a table, calmly munching on a piece of lettuce, while at that vegan teacher sings her song. He seems to be listening to the lyrics, nodding along as he eats his greens. But then, right at the end of the video, he spits out the lettuce, stares into the camera, and calls the woman a vegan donut. He then grabs a massive burger from off camera and starts going to town on it. Undoubtedly, that move outraged vegans worldwide. Back in 2022, another TikTok video of his created quite a stir, hitting the headlines and catching the attention of PETA. Yeah, it's never a fun day when PETA gets involved. Anyway, they urged Ramsey's five kids to disown him. This came after he posted a video pretending to select a lamb for the slaughter. But time for some good news. See, Ramsey used to be totally against veganism and wasn't shy about making it known. But lately, he's had a change of heart. However, this shift didn't sit well with Piers Morgan. Oh, for f sake, Ramsey, not you too. This looks utterly revolting, he wrote on Twitter. This was in response to the news that Ramsey's restaurant, Bread Street Kitchen in London, was planning to serve a vegan roast dinner. Ramsey didn't just brush off Morgan's comment, though. He said, So Piers Morgan is now a food critic. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Go and yourself. <laughs> Seriously. Anyway, what were we talking about again? Oh, right, Hell's Kitchen. Coming back to Josie, she seemed all right, until her veganism became a total mess for her team. She went and threw a load of lobster butter into her team's dish, then acted like it wasn't her problem because, well, it wasn't vegan. But that wasn't all. If you remember, in the Relay Challenge in Season 20, Josie faced a tough situation during Round 2 when she opted for lobster butter to make the salmon sauce. I'm using lobster butter. Because I'm vegan, I'm at a slight disadvantage because I can't taste the When the sauce came out salty, Josie claimed that she made the sauce without seasoning it. I finished the sauce, but I did not season it. Oh, it is way too salty. Lobster butter is really salty. Keanu pointed out that lobster butter is inherently salty, but Josie defended herself. I'm not going to taste things that have meat in it, but now I know to have people taste stuff. Lesson learned. It's not happening again. I mean, come on. At least let your team try it out. You can't just refuse to taste and refuse help and then act like it's no big deal. Seriously, where's the accountability? This back and forth left Keanu utterly disappointed. Josie's starting to realize that being a vegan can hurt a lot in the long run. I mean, the sauce ruined it for everything. She's right. In the previous challenge, Josie prepared a Chinese breakfast featuring sticky rice and chicken stir fry. But unfortunately, the dish got panned for overwhelmingly tasting like soy sauce. And she was just as defensive then, too. Damn. Do you taste that? I did, Chef. However, after Ooh. I put in the slurry and mm. I had chicken juice. So this admission led Emily to comment under her breath, suggesting it was a rookie mistake. Now, Emily wasn't Ramsey's favorite either. Oh, I'm a full-time vegetarian. Come on. Two times, Chef. But at least Emily knew this. But in the kitchen, in the kitchen, I'll taste the food because right. I think that's very important. It is important. Yes, you're right. Meanwhile, Trenton found the humor in the situation. <laughs> I can't believe you wouldn't try your own food. It's because it has chicken in it. So, what's your take on all this? Anyone up for a vegan HK season? <laughs> Get in the comments and let me know. But what happened during the three-course meal challenge in season two was just as ridiculous, if not more. So, for this challenge, Keith paired up with Garrett, maybe thinking he needed some extra help. Me and Garrett are going to do both together over here next to each other. I didn't want to put too much responsibility on Garrett. He was definitely onto something. Garrett was the first guy from the blue team to face Ramsey's judgment. He went head to head with Sarah, serving up a roasted corn, scallop, and shrimp bisque. But Ramsey, always with that eagle eye, noticed something off about the dish. If I'd swallowed that, I'll be on the way to hospital. He forgot how sharp the shrimp tail was. Ramsey warned Garrett about it, but Garrett argued back. If you order shrimp, guess what you automatically assume? That there's gonna be a tail on there, old Gordo. Anyway, when the blue team lost the challenge, Garrett's mood went south real fast. He didn't hold back and started ranting about how Ramsey got it all wrong. He judged wrong. Period. He even got the whole blue team on board with plotting revenge against the red team. I hope they have fun with their consolation prize. None of those three will be in the finals. Talk about sour grapes, right? And then, when the red team went ahead with their reward, Garrett lost his cool completely. Oh, they put 
would have been a soft. Yeah, he flipped them the bird, not realizing that Ramsey was watching the whole thing go down. Garrett flipped off Chef Ramsey, which I don't think that was a good idea. You bet it wasn't. The next day, Ramsey called him out over it. Get me this. Do you want to go? No. Garrett tried to play it off, saying he didn't mean anything by it, but Ramsey wasn't having it. I never, ever want to see that in front of my face again. Let's get that clear. Garrett really crossed a line by dissing Ramsey's judgment and flipping off the red team. If you ask me, I think he might be one of the worst losers the show has had the displeasure of featuring. When the women returned from their reward, Garrett made a really underhanded comment that rubbed Heather the wrong way. I want to keep talking. Y'all women have dinner ready for us men when we get home from work. <laughs> Heather got seriously upset because she saw it as disrespectful, which it was. Garrett turns and says, go home and cook our dinner like women should. She didn't hold back and went off about how angry it made her, confiding in the other women on the patio. Get in there and cook for us if like, we work so hard and we're coming back from work. Have our dinner ready. By the way, Hell's Kitchen has been rightly criticized by a lot of viewers for perpetuating misogyny. Add this moment to the list. Props to Heather, though. She stood her ground and was clear about how he had no right to talk to her like that. I'm not your wife. I'm not your girlfriend. You don't... Like here, here. Later on, Garrett and Heather had a chat about his sexist comment. He tried explaining himself, saying he wouldn't let anyone, regardless of gender, disrespect him. But Heather still wasn't having it. She felt like he didn't get it and hoped he'd reap what he had sown come judgment. I just don't appreciate anybody talking shit to me. A part of life is fucking respect. Bro, nobody was disrespecting you. It's simple. You were jealous and petty and couldn't handle your loss. Seriously, the way he talked down to the women by suggesting they should be cooking really got under my skin. It was sexist, plain and simple. When Heather called him out on it, Garrett fell short in explaining himself. Like, come on, have a little bit of empathy. Anyway, the dude was arrogant and confrontational right from the start. If I think Chef Ramsay's being an asshole to be an asshole, I'll be an asshole myself. During the signature dish challenge, Garrett stepped up as the eighth contestant to present his dish to Ramsey. Right off the bat, Ramsey wanted to get to know Garrett's cooking background a little better, to which Garrett shared a surprising revelation. The first cooking job I had was in a jail. When Garrett presented his unknown meat dish, Ramsey's mood took an unexpected turn, and he invited Gabe over to taste it too. This move seemed like Ramsey was setting up a test of honesty. Gabe played his part perfectly and revealed the meat was overcooked. It was a little overdone for me, Chef. It was overcooked. Yes, Chef. Garrett's response to Gabe's feedback was, as should be obvious in hindsight, confrontational, as he initially challenged the accusation. I'm so mad that somebody could just boldly lie to my face. However, Ramsey confirmed Gabe's assessment, calling the meat dry, but not before acknowledging and praising Gabe's honesty. It's very dry. So far, some really shit cooks, but one honest one. Garrett needed so many reality checks. He's got to be up there with some of the most illusional chefs on the show. Hey, there's a video idea. Now, I can't believe that by at least season 13, why these chefs once cast didn't learn how to make a damn risotto. I'm talking about Janai. Only Chef Ramsey can take something that looks like a dildo and turn it into a $150 place. Yeah. Her. During her second dinner service, Janai was handling the appetizer station alongside Ashley, ready to nail the risotto. But things went south fast. She was focused on getting her risotto just right, but forgot the most important part. Talking to her teammates, Deneen and Katie, when they tried to coordinate timing, and that left them seriously annoyed. How long that risotto? Janae, how long? I'm asking Janae for five times and I'm not getting any answers. Anyway, when Janai finally sent out her risotto, it was super mushy. It's like baby food, it's mush. Ramsey, in classic Ramsey style, made the women taste it before dropping the bomb. Janae is overcooked. Yes, sir. Not by two minutes, but by 10 minutes. Yeah, imagine that. It was overcooked by a whole 10 minutes. That goes way beyond mere negligence. Her second attempt didn't fare much better. It was way too soupy this time around. And that really set Ramsey off. It's soup. 
It's just too much liquid. Here, Sit down. It's too soupy. Honestly, Ramsey, I'd describe your frozen mushroom risotto at Walmart in the same way. Glass houses and all that. Anyway, as she tried for a third time, she still wasn't cueing Deneen properly. Yeah, I'm ready. You're ready on risotto? Yes. The wall. Yes. And when she sent out her next risotto, Ramsey was beyond done with her. Stop! Time out! Time out! Marina, yes, get in there! Yeah, Ramsey was so pissed that he brought in Marino to taste it. And surprise, surprise! You're Italian, taste that fing shit risotto. Mushy, mushy. It was mushy again. Ramsey was through with them and he sent the women to sort out their issues in the pantry, issuing an ultimatum for good measure. Have a fucking meeting and sort it out. But when you walk back in that kitchen, if anyone hasn't got their shit together, game over. Finally, as a result of the threat, and after some proper communication with Deneen, they managed to send out their first table of appetizers. Round of applause. Anyway, Janai found herself as the first nominee for elimination from the red team, followed by Deneen. They joined Sterling and Fernando from the blue team on the chopping block. When it was her turn to plead her case, Janai only owned up to overcooking the first risotto, conveniently overlooking the entire rest of the service. I overcooked the risotto, and Sorry. that's all it was. That's all it was, did yes, you just say? Her elimination came down to her weak performance on appetizers and her refusal to admit to the full extent of her mistakes. Janai's reluctance to acknowledge the series of errors she made during the service played a big part in sealing her fate. My chef Ramsay made a mistake. Nobody in that kitchen is better than me. Chef Ramsay may not know it. Man, the overconfidence, right? All the while screwing up the most basic stuff. Ramsay summed it up best. Cooking risotto is elementary, but tonight, I found out Janae is still in kindergarten. Now, gear up for the most ridiculous elimination plea ever. I love to cook. I love to, uh, to make things taste really good. Trust me, Ramsey was looking at him in utter disbelief. Like, is that the best you can come up with, Tony? I feel like the Hell's Kitchen community often glosses over Tony's performance and his elimination because of Mr. I Ain't No Bitch and his outburst. But Tony was hilariously bad. During prep before the second service, he screwed up big time. He encountered difficulty while attempting to slice a grapefruit. Yes, a grapefruit, prompting Kevin to offer assistance. However, Tony wasn't receptive at all. See how they go in at an angle? Yeah. All right, angle. It's like, come on now, I can cut a grapefruit. You don't have to do it for me. No, you don't. Shortly after, Ramsey noticed Tony's lack of focus while holding the grapefruit. Ramsey advised Tony on using the proper technique, emphasizing the importance of cutting the fruit over a bowl to preserve its juice. Oh, fuck. Hallelujah. You look like you're freeze frame there, you know? Uh. Master impersonator strikes again. Despite Ramsey's guidance, he failed again. Shocker. Why is it like a hexagon? That was a bad grapefruit. Uh, oh, oh. You're blaming the grapefruit? Uh, no, I'm not. No. That crash course in grapefruit cutting really didn't help in the long run. Tony was in the weeds before it even started. He looked like he was gonna wet himself. A rare moment where I completely agree with him. As the team prepared for service, Tony lagged behind while everyone else readied their stations. Tony! Over a bowl. Ah, over a bowl. Shit. Ramsey, growing increasingly impatient, instructed Tony twice to correctly cut the grapefruit over a bowl. You little f I'm this close to kicking you out. You're making me a little bit nervous. During the dinner service, Tony was assigned to the fish station. When Ramsey called out the first ticket, Tony's excitement to prepare scallops took over. And without consulting anyone, he went ahead and started cooking them. I love cooking fish. I was just so pumped that I just wanted to cook right away. Just like Raj, except without half his charm. Ramsey, noticing this, questioned why he acted without confirming the order with the team. Jim backed Ramsey up and clarified that scallops hadn't been requested to be cooked yet. Ramsey took the opportunity to continue Tony's impromptu education. The lesson? Communication. Come here, you little prick. So you bring the fucking scallops. He hasn't got the shrimp in the pan. And the capellini's just got in, you d**k. 
In his signature style, of course. While rectifying the error by preparing the scallops again, Tony managed to maintain a positive attitude. However, on his second attempt, despite claiming he was ready, the scallops turned out undercooked. You got better vision than anybody with those four eyes of yours. Look at that! It's so cold and it's raw! Ramsey was so mad that he questioned Tony's capabilities. Can you cook? Yes, sir. What can you cook? Anything, chef. You are dreaming. Move, Tonya. Damn right he was. Moments later, Ramsey called out an order, specifically asking for the halibut to be prepared immediately. I want now one halibut, one chicken. Yes, chef. I want one now. Do you want the halibut now? Oh my god. However, Tony initially misunderstood Ramsey's request, prompting Ramsey to repeat it. Tony placed the halibut in the pan, but Ramsey quickly noticed something was off. <laughs> I didn't even season the fish. I always season it. I didn't season it though. Oh my god. What? I mean, why? Due to this mistake, Kevin had to step in and take charge of the fish station once again. To make matters worse, Ramsey noticed that four of Tony's teammates were supporting him on his station, yet he still failed to maintain control over it, leading to this glorious moment. I don't really want to try to take charge. I don't want to take charge. Would you just shut the fuck up? You're like chickens right now. Chickens, you hear that? Tony's mistakes were obvious, but that plea alone would have sent anyone home, right? Now, there are a bunch of other moments I found ridiculous, like when Alex, one of the best winners of the show, used his punishment pass to go bowling. Like, my dude, there were so many other great rewards you passed up on for something as basic as that. It was like when Brett used his punishment pass for that dumb movie. Or, should I say, to spy on the other team. Which moments from the show did you find ridiculous? Make sure to share them in the comments down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe, turn on my post notifications, and make sure to check out this next video right here. Trust me, it's worth your time.